In our lesson today, we are going to discuss salts. Specifically, we are going to discuss solubility of salts. And number two, how to prepare soluble salts. What is a salt? So in chemistry, a salt refers to a wide range of ionic compounds, such as magnesium chloride, lead to sulfate, potassium carbonate, and so on. Now, one thing you need to know is that if you want to excel in questions featuring salts, you need to have solubility of salts at the tips of your fingers. You need to know which salts are soluble and which are not. So I've tried to summarize this information in a way that will be easier for you to recall during exams or assessments. So number one, nitrates. When it comes to nitrates, all nitrates are soluble. You see any nitrate, immediately assume that this is a soluble salt. Number two, sulfates. So sulfates are soluble except for these three. Number one, barium, lead to sulfate, and calcium sulfate. So barium and lead to sulfate are insoluble. But Calcium sulfate is slightly soluble. Moving on to the third one, chlorides. All chlorides are soluble except for silver chloride and lead to chloride. Now, one thing to remember is that lead to chloride is soluble in hot water. So if you were to dissolve it in hot water or warm it, it's going to dissolve. Another one is carbonates. When it comes to carbonates and hydroxides, just remember all of these are insoluble. All of them, with the exception of these three. Potassium carbonate, sodium carbonate, and ammonium carbonate. And again, potassium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide, and ammonium hydroxide. As for the rest, they are all insoluble. How easy is this information? So if you have this information, then it becomes easier for you to know which method you should use to prepare a certain salt. Now, moving on to the next part of our lesson, how do we prepare a soluble salt? Now, when we talk about a soluble salt, this is simply a salt that will dissolve in water to form a solution. Now, I'm going to give you a super, super simple way that you can use to guide you when in preparation of uh, soluble salts. Now, if you want to prepare such salts, you're going to need, in most cases, an acid. So you can either use a metal, a metal oxide, a metal hydroxide, or a metal carbonate. Now, what do we mean by a metal carbonate? This is simply a carbonate of a metal, you know, such as potassium carbonate, lead to carbonate. Same goes for metal hydroxide. This is simply a hydroxide of a metal, such as calcium hydroxide and such. Now, you can use any of these four with a respective acid to form a soluble acid. Now, I'm going to ensure that by the end of this lesson, you can adequately answer such questions. So let's get into it. So this is the procedure that you're going to use to guide you when answering questions asking you on preparation of soluble salts. Now, I'm not saying you can use these in every single question, but in most questions. Now, step number one is that you're going to add the excess metal, metal oxide, metal hydroxide, or metal carbonate to the dilute acid. Now, when it comes to the acid, of course, you're going to choose a corresponding acid. So if you're asked, for example, for a chloride salt, then the suitable acid is hydrochloric acid. If you're asked for a nitrate, then of course, it's going to be nitric 5 acid and so on. Next step is that you're going to filter to remove the unreacted solid. So you're going to remove the residue. The residue is going to be your unreacted solid. And the filtrate is what is going to contain the salt you're after. So you're going to heat the filtrate to saturation and then cool in order to form crystals. Remember, in most questions, what they ask you is that how do you obtain the crystals of a certain salt? So you don't want to heat the filtrate to evaporation because this will cause it to lose the water of crystallization and therefore crystals will not be formed. So you'll just heat it to saturation and then cool in order to form crystals. Last step you're going to dry between filter papers such that you end up having dry crystals. Capish? Okay, moving on to our first question. Starting with copper 2 oxide, describe how you can prepare crystals of copper 2 sulfate. Now, if we want to prepare copper 2 sulfate, we're going to react copper 2 oxide with the respective acid. In this case, it's sulfuric 6 acid. So this will give us copper 2 sulfate plus water. Now, this is a neutralization reaction. So a neutralization reaction is a reaction whereby you're having a base reacting with an acid to form salt plus water. In this case, our base is copper 2 oxide. And of course, the acid is sulfuric 6 acid. So our first step, add excess copper 2 oxide to dilute sulfuric 6 acid to form copper 2 sulfate. 
Now, one thing I'd like to mention is this. You have to include the term dilute because when it comes to sulfuric six acid, the properties of dilute sulfuric six acid are very different from those of concentrated sulfuric six acid. So that is our first step. Moving on, we are going to filter to remove any unreacted copper two oxide. Third step, heat the filtrate. Now, our filtrate in this case is going to contain copper two sulfate solution. So we are going to heat the filtrate to saturation and cool it to form crystals. And of course, last one, dry the crystals between filter papers. And we are done. Now, three things I would like you to note is that, number one, the reason why excess copper 2 oxide is used is so that to ensure all the acid is reacted. You know, all the sulfuric 6 acid has been used up. Next one is that in such cases, in such experiments, you might find that the acid has been warmed up. And the reason is simply to speed up the rate of the reaction. So the reaction between copper 2 oxide and sulfuric 6 acid is a bit slow. Now, last one, it's better to carry out evaporation over a water bath. And this is because this will lead to the formation of larger crystals. Now, moving on to our second example. Now, in this second example, the question goes as such. Describe how lead 2 nitrate can be prepared in the lab starting with lead 2 carbonate. So we'll follow the same script. Add excess lead 2 carbonate onto our dilute acid, which in this case is going to be nitric 5 acid. And the reason for this is so as to form lead 2 nitrate. Next step, we are going to filter to remove any unreacted lead 2 carbonate. Third one, Heat the filtrate to saturation and cool to form crystals. Last step, dry between filter papers. Now, two things I would like you to note is this. Number one, you're going to have effervescence. So when you have lead 2 carbonate reacting with nitric 5 acid, you're going to form three products. Lead 2 nitrate, carbon 4 oxide, and water. So the carbon 4 oxide gas is the one that will produce effervescence, you know, bubbling. Now, how do you know that the end point has been attained? You know that the reaction is complete. In two ways. Number one is if there's no more effervescence. If you don't see any uh, any bubbling, that means that the reaction is now complete. And number two is if there is unreacted lead to carbonate. So if you find that some of the lead to carbonate has remained unreacted, that means that all the acid has been used up. Moving on to our next example, we are going to form magnesium chloride from magnesium metal. So as you can see, we've been using different examples. In the first question, we used a metal oxide. In the next one, a metal carbonate. Now in this question, we are going to use an actual metal to get a salt. So we're going to start with magnesium metal. So again, can you see how easy this is? We are following the same script. You're going to add excess magnesium metal onto hydrochloric acid to form magnesium chloride. Filter to remove any unreacted magnesium metal. Heat the filtrate to saturation and cool to form crystals and dry between filter papers. And you are done and done. Now, our last example, which I believe is one of the most important ones. This is a question that is frequently tested in KCC. In fact, they tested it in 2019, 2017. 2000. You're seeing the trend, right? So the question goes as such, starting with copper tannings, describe how a sample of copper 2 sulfate crystals can be prepared in the lab. Now, if you look at it, you'll find that this is no different than the question we just discussed, whereby we are preparing a salt from its respective metal. But in reality, this is different. And the reason why it has to be handled differently is because Copper is found below hydrogen in the reactivity series. So metals that are found below hydrogen in the reactivity series cannot displace hydrogen from the acid and therefore will not react with an acid. So copper cannot directly react with sulfuric acid to form copper to sulfate. So we have to form another compound of copper and then react it with the acid. So what you're going to do is you're going to heat the copper tannings, which are essentially small pieces of copper, in air in order to form copper 2 oxide. Now, this is where we come in with the script. So after forming copper 2 oxide, you can then react it with dilute sulfuric acid in order to obtain copper 2 sulfate solution. And then just as uh, we've talked about, heat the solution to saturation and allow it to cool in order to form copper 2 sulfate crystals, dry between filter papers, and you are done. So the only difference is the starting point. So the starting point is formation of copper 2 oxide by heating it in air. Now, one thing is that when it comes to questions regarding salts, 
you have to answer systematically and you have to go step by step. So, for example, if you were to neglect the first step and start with react copper 2 oxide with dilute sulfuric acid, your answer is going to be considered a non-starter. Non-starter, there's nothing that is going to be marked in that answer. So, you have to go step by step. And that, ladies and gentlemen, brings us to the end of this lesson.